apply that to your own life. I want to finish by reading some things from the Bible and uh, it goes to show this incredible, incredible life that we have given. This is what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Who has made us sufficient to be ministers of a new covenant? Not of the letter, but of the spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. Now the ministry of death, if you're able to repeat after me, say the ministry of death. Come on, say that again. Say the ministry of death. The ministry of death carved in letters on stone. Now, in the Bible, you find that there was a plenty of the Bible that was the law, but there was only one small bit of the law that was written on stone. What was that? That was the Ten Commandments. Paul calls the Ten Commandments the ministry of death. The ministry of death carved in letters on stone came with such glory. So the ministry of death had glory, it had the presence of God that the Israelites could not gaze at Moses' face because of its glory, which was brought to an end. Indeed, in this case, what once had glory, can we go back, verse 6 and 7, and then go to verse 8 if we can, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 there. So let's go back, read from the beginning, we skip that verse. So 2 Corinthians chapter 3, starting from verse 6. We're going to read. Verse 7, if the ministry of death carved in letters on stone came with such glory that the Israelites could not gaze at Moses' face because of its glory, which was being brought to an end. Can we see verse 5, verse 8 now, the next verse? Will not the ministry of the Spirit have even more glory? Now, if there was glory in the ministry of condemnation, everybody say the ministry of condemnation. The ministry of righteousness must far exceed it in glory. Indeed, in this case, what once had glory has come to have no glory at all because of the glory that surpasses it. For if what came, what was being brought to an end came with glory, much more will what is permanent have glory. Since we have such hope, we are very bold, not like Moses, who would put a veil over his face so that the Israelites might not gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to an end. But their minds were hardened. Even this day, even to this day, when they read the Old Covenant, that veil still remains unlifted because only through Christ is that veil taken away. Yes, to this very day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their hearts. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There's freedom. There's freedom. Here's the summary. God came to people and said, I've got some, I've got some help for you. This is what you should do. This is what you shouldn't do. This is what you should do. This is what you shouldn't do. If you do this, you will get this blessing. If you don't do this, this is what the curses are going to be. If you do this, this will benefit you. If you don't do this, I'm going to punish you. If you do this, this will go well for you. If you don't do this, shame on you. And he said, it came with such glory. It came with such the presence of God. It came with such, such, such an awareness that God was real. But it didn't work. What did it do? It brought the ministry of death. What's the point of coming to church and leaving like you feel you're dead? And if you've been engaging with Christianity for so long and you're saying, man, the more I engage with Christianity and church and the Bible, the more I feel I'm dead on the inside. I wonder whether you've been engaging with the wrong ministry, the ministry of death, because the ministry of death, which condemns you, shames you, tells you you are good for nothing, is not repentance. God already knows what you did. But here is what God does in the new covenant. He said, I'm not going to give you some shame and condemnation to fix your life. I'm going to send my son and he will die in your place. Take your sin, take your guilt, take your shame, take your curse. And if you will believe in the moving of the Holy Spirit, the ministry of righteousness will not lead you to death. The ministry of righteousness will lead you to life. That's the gospel. Where the spirit is, there is freedom. But the veil is always on your head. If you read it through the lens 
of Moses. And that's why a lot of people know the word of God, but they don't know the God of the word. How do you know? You can find out through their words. They won't be talking words of joy. All their words will be everything that's wrong with the church, everything that's wrong with the world, everything that's wrong with the government. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. And in whatever your heart is full of, it will speak. And you'll find other people, you'll think, man, they don't have a care in the world because they're full of joy, they're full of righteousness, they're full of peace. When you're around them, you feel like you've stood up, of, you can stand up tall, you've grown two inches. It's not because they don't have problems in their life, but they're being led by the Spirit where they are receiving the ministry of righteousness and life. And life is coming through the work of the Holy Spirit that's helping them to break addiction and break sin and live a holy life and live for Jesus, not because they're being shamed when they read the Bible and condemned when they go through the Word of God, but they're receiving the empowerment of the Holy Spirit that changes them from the inside out rather than changing you from the outside in. And many of you who have been to church before, you have learned how to act, talk, react, communicate as a Christian because you've been told, you don't do this, you do this, you don't do this, you do this, you don't do this, you do this. And then you conform your ways to how a Christian should act and behave but all along on the inside you were dying you were dealing with pain and you've been addicted to people's approval desperately sad and lonely on the inside and turning to drink and drugs to somehow bring peace but Jesus stands there and says that's the ministry of death but there is a better ministry. It's called the ministry of righteousness. That ministry has glory. It will feel like you have the presence of God. Religion is a lousy teacher. Religion will teach you that on your best day you can do it. And you know those days when you've read the Bible five hours. You've prayed for ten hours. And you're on top of the world. And you think, man, I'll never fall again. This is going to be me. I will never. Watch me. Watch me. Nobody can touch me. But next week somebody touched you. Next week somebody didn't smile at you. Next week something happened and your football team didn't win or you looked at your bank balance and you went into depression and then all of a sudden the joy is gone, the peace is gone, the righteousness is gone but that is not the life you are meant to live where you are on top of the mountain one day, you're in the valley the next day so the people around you are actually looking at you and going, I wonder what season of life they're in. Are they on the mountain top? Are they in a valley? Are they in a good place? Are they in a bad place? All of those are symptoms that you got introduced to the wrong ministry, the ministry of death that shows you that if you try hard and be good and don't sin and read your Bible and pray and bring your tithes and honor the church and honor the pastor, Jesus will be happy with you. And if not, you're going to hell. Jesus comes and abolishes the entire thing and says, what I want is not a contract. What I want is a covenant, a relationship. Sheds his blood on the cross of Calvary and says, the glory of righteousness is what I bring. Paul calls the Ten Commandments the ministry of death. He says, and he calls Jesus' ministry the ministry of righteousness that brings glory. He calls the ministry of death the ministry that has come to fade. And he calls the ministry of righteousness the ministry that has come to stay. The gospel works, my friend. And today, if you are in a place where you have not reconciled with your pain, You've not reconciled with your addiction. You've not reconciled with what has happened to you. Your, dis your disappointments, the unanswered prayers. I want to give you an opportunity to heal today. I want to give you an opportunity to look at the face of Jesus. It is only in the face of Jesus that the veil is lifted. Even today, you can read the Bible through the lens of Moses. And you're reading the Bible and you're feeling worse than you did when you first started. And because you're feeling worse than you did when you first started, you've got somebody to blame. You've got to blame somebody because you can't blame yourself. So you then use the Bible to bash it on other people's heads, other churches' heads. And you go on social media posting how other people have all got it wrong and you're the one that's got it right. I want to say to you, you can heal from that pain. That's a symptom of a deep rooted pain and you don't need to carry that pain with you another day of your life. You can be introduced to the ministry of righteousness. It came with permanent glory and if the veil of Moses is lifted off your eyes where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Are we saying that obedience does not matter? No, obedience absolutely matters but it's an obedience that comes through the love, that comes through the transformation work of the Holy Spirit, not an obedience that comes through shame. That is the gospel. It is the power of God to salvation to every person who has faith. Today, 
I want to give you an opportunity to heal from the inside. I want to give you an opportunity to truly say to Jesus, Jesus, I want to receive that connection. I want to receive that love. I want to receive that healing. I want to receive that embrace. Today, the ministry of righteousness is available. I want to finish by reading these words from Kent Keith. These words were, were hung on uh, Mother Teresa's um, the, uh, the, the leprosy home in Calcutta for 20 years. And she hung these words there. And uh, I think they're beautiful. Let me read this to you. And I think with that we will pray. It says this. People are often unreasonable, illogical, and self-centered. Forgive them anyway. If you are kind, people may accuse you of selfish, ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you are successful, you will win some false friends and some true enemies. Succeed anyway. If you are honest and frank, people may cheat you. Be honest and frank anyway. What you spend years building, someone could destroy overnight. Build anyway. If you find serenity and happiness, they may be jealous. Be happy anyway. The good you do today, people will often forget tomorrow. Do good anyway. Give the world the best you have and it may never be enough. Give the world the best you've got anyway. You see, in the final analysis, it is between you and God. It was never between you and them anyway. In the final analysis, it is between you and God. It was never between you and them anyway. Can I ask you a question? How are you living? Have you processed pain on the inside? Are you addicted to something? Approval? Insecurity? Social media? Drink? Drugs maybe? We can come to a place like this, sing our songs. And it's good. There's no condemnation or judgment here. But Jesus says, come on. You can do better than that. I stand here to give you life. It's the ministry of righteousness. The ministry that tells you, you stand right with God, not because of what you've done, but because of what Christ has done. And if you will find it in your heart, to be honest, Pastor Greg Rochelle said these words. He said, you can only be as strong as you are honest. You can only be as strong as you are honest. If you can be honest and say, you know what? It's true. There is a bit of loneliness in me. You know, it's true. There is a bit of, yeah, I'm always hoping people like me. There's, there's this tendency of, oh, I'm addicted to human approval. I want people to know me, to like me. I don't want people to reject me. It's true. I've got a drink problem. I've got a drug problem. Hey, at Beacon Church, you belong. There's no judgment. There's no condemnation. But there is help available. If you want to be honest, if you want to be willing to say, yeah, I could use some help. Where is the help coming from? Well, the help is not coming from shame. The help is com not coming from more rules. The help is not coming from us rejecting you. The help is not coming from telling you that you've got a problem and you are a bad person. The help is not coming from any of that because none of that works. But the gospel works. It is the power of God to salvation to every person who has faith. For a moment of concentration, privacy, we close your eyes. Because in the final analysis, it is not between you and them, it is between you and God. And today, I want to encourage you to be aware of the glory of the new covenant. Not the ministry of death, not the ministry of condemnation, but the ministry that brings life. Father, I pray for every addiction in this room today, that they will be life. I pray, God, for every person who is struggling from the addiction to human approval. They will be life. I pray for every person that's addicted to social media, they will be life. I pray for every person that's addicted to unhealthy eating habits, they will be life. I pray for every person that's addicted to drinks, they will be life. I pray for every person that's addicted to drugs, they will be life. I pray for every person that's addicted to their sense of worthlessness, every person that is feeling utterly lonely and despair, every person that is feeling, Lord, that they're struggling with mental illnesses that are connected to a lack of approval. Lord, I pray that in Jesus' name, today, the ministry of righteousness, not the ministry of condemnation, will bring glory. Let that glory manifest in people's lives right now. Let that glory come and bring freedom right now.
Let that glory cause people's lives to be changed and transformed. Let that glory cause such power to manifest in our lives, Lord, because this glory has been brought by Jesus himself. Thank you for the cross. Thank you that we are not here because we are following letters carved on a stone. We are following Jesus, who by the power of the Holy Spirit will give us power over sin, will give us power over addiction, will help us to live lives that are worthy of the calling of the gospel. Thank you that Jesus Christ is our ultimate hero. He put himself second, gave himself up so that we might be saved, healed, and delivered. Thank you, Jesus, for your grace. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your power today. I don't want to shame anybody, but you know if this message applies to you and you're thinking, man, there is an emptiness I feel on the inside sometimes. There is a hollow that I feel on the inside sometimes. I know I haven't processed grief. I know I haven't processed pain. <laughs> One of my mentors once said to me, and it shocked me, he said to me, time doesn't heal anything. Time just makes you forget how bad it used to hurt. Time gives you time to process it. And I encourage you to not just bury your head in the sand and hope that it all goes away. And you know, here at Beacon Church, we have a ministry team that's available to help you process that. So if you think, man, I'd like to start a healing journey, will you connect? Will you reach out to us via social media platforms or our website and say, that was a message for me. I could do with a few sessions where I'm just connecting with somebody, healing through this, talking in a lab, asking God to come and heal my pain and take me to a place of permanent glory, the glory of righteousness. Father, today I pray that every person who is inside saying, oh, I wish somebody would help me, I pray God that they will realize that help is available, that help is available. Today I pray God bring healing, bring hope, and bring deliverance. If you've never made a decision to become a follower of Jesus Christ, today will be a great day to make that decision. If you say, I don't know who Jesus is, but I would like to follow him. I've felt condemned most of my life because I could never live up to the expectations of what it means to be a Christian. But today I give my life to Jesus knowing that he gave his life for me. If you want to make that decision, today would be a great day to do that. I'd like to lead you in a very simple prayer. Many people here who are followers of Jesus Christ will also pray that prayer so that you don't feel you're on your own. If you want to make the decision to become a follower of Jesus, Simply repeat these words, say, Jesus, I give you my life and I receive yours. I receive righteousness, which is right standing with God. I receive peace and I receive joy. Thank you that my sins are forgiven. Thank you that I am now connected to you. I believe if you've made that prayer, made a decision to become a follower of Jesus Christ, whether you've made that decision today, or if you're one of those people that say, gosh, the opposite to my addiction is connection. I really would like to heal deeply. Can I really encourage you to